Guys, good evening to all of you, depending on where you might be from around the world. I will want to use the opportunity to uh, speak to all of you and uh, address some very few things that are going on. Last year, just around this uh, time, uh, there was um, an incident of uh, a young prophet of God who lived in the United States, married to a professional banker. Um, they had uh, been married for two years, um, and the first year of their marriage had been hurled. The second year of their marriage, they were living apart. Their marriage was so abusive and so, you know, um, degrading, let me use that word. And uh, so many crazy things had happened. This young lady that I'm talking about had been of an enormous help to this young man. To the point that where they fellowship that she had contributed financially out of her sweat and her labor and input into that work. In other words, that lady should have been honored by the work of God, which the young prophet of God was doing. But you would not believe this guy, you know, after all the videos that came out of for assault and all that, took a gun, went into the lady's workplace and shot this lady seven times to death. As I'm speaking to you, the guy is in custody or in uh, prison incarceration and the lady has been buried. I'm talking to you about young people in their early 30s. Early 30s, just like that, God. Brilliant people. I did a video at a time. I spoke to people how painful the death of the young lady was and how they should have gone in hell and they didn't and all that kind of thing. Now, this is a random one. I'm going to talk to you. Anybody who comes and please share the page, start a watch party. We need to talk to ourselves and uh, we need to admonish ourselves with the work of, uh, word of the Lord and all stuff like that. Also, we will have to rebuke things that needs to be, re be rebuked. You know, and even on my engineer, we will have to detect it when it is coming, and so that we can be able to avoid it before they become. Too many precious lives are just going down the drain, and it's all because of lust, of uh, false doctrine, and false counselings and false teachings and all stuff like that. One of the things that the Bible talked about in the last days was going to come. These are some of the things that, you know, are at the rampage to the, you know, apex and uh, precious lives are just going down the drain just like that. It's so sad. I am going to be very brief, but very, very straight, not missing the target this very moment. Young ladies are going to relationships and they have, you know, uh, forgotten to go with their reasoning faculties because of economic reasons and all that. Very sad, and it's not only this. I'm doing this particular thing on the premise of the beautiful young lady who died at East Legon yesterday. Great, great, great woman. Yeah, that, you know, and all that. I'm going to attribute it to some few things. This young lady uh, have died a very, you know, uh, very painful death. Very painful death. I do not want to mention their names. Their names have been given out there. This thing, you know, sometimes I hear this thing, oh, don't talk like that because this can happen to anybody. Nonsense. And I want to repeat that it will not happen to anybody. When the right decisions are made, when the right choices are made, if we watch ourselves and if we are walking with the Lord and uh, in the light of his word, there is no way that these things are going to happen. Or repeat. I'm serious. We are not vigilant. And this is one of the reasons why we have all these crazy things happening to all these brilliant young ladies. Abusive relationships. Get help. Get help. Get help. We have preachers who beat their wives. We have prophets who beat their wives. We have apostles, bishops who beat their wives. And we cannot be, you know, rebuked. It is not enough to address. To rebuke. Seriously. 
it is serious to the point that sometimes, you know, we wrongly, wrongly impose, wrongly apply the scriptures and wrongly impose, you know, human dogma on people in the name of Bible. And we keep them in this incarcerated relationship until they die. Until they die. And when they die, we come to seek to do the aftermath rubbish. That is what happens. I'm a father and somebody is abusing my baby girl. And I sit and say the Lord will do it. Nonsense. Nonsense. Sit and just say that the Lord will do it. The Lord will do what? He's giving you brains to think and giving you the ability, the dexterity, and the discipline not to, you know, throw your children in the light of, uh, uh, in the path of these crazy men. Most of these people are psychotically and neurotically depressed who need help. And we leave them in the hands of these, you know, people thinking that the Lord will do it. The, the Lord will do it. Nonsense. I am going to use the opportunity to, you know, uh, address few things and rebuke them. There are relationships that we should never leave our sisters, our daughters, the daughters of Zion. We should not leave them in them. We should not leave them in there. As if that was not enough, this young, young lady that is related to this... Um, uh, young man who works at the Volta region with the national youth, whatever, you know, the lady just get, you know, just like that. Agbele. Agbele. Then what are you? You can beat somebody you are not married to. Absolute nonsense. You can touch somebody. Absolute nonsense. The church will have to wake up and take their rightful place. And that so that all this kind of rubbish will stop. Nobody deserves to die in the hands of somebody who do not know the worth of a relationship and the worth of marriage. If this is the kind of thing you call marriage, I am not interested. If this is what you call relationships, I am not interested. I am not interested in anything that abuses people, that, you know, uh, disdain people, marginalizes people, reduce people to nothing, trample on them, step on them. I am not interested in it. They get into a nice relationship and end up, you know, stupidly. So sad. And it's all because we are not, listen to me, we don't apply wisdom and we don't apply knowledge. And when, when it, start, it starts like, a, you know, I'm in love. The, the people cannot even determine what love is. They can't even depict what love is. You know, they get into relationship, they are in it, they are being incarcerated, being abused, and all stuff like that, and they are in it, and you know, they still keep quoting, the Lord will do it. May I tell you that God does not walk or entertain or deal with stupid people, foolish people. The Lord, listen to that. When I mean one pancras, for any woman, nante, when you woman say, may cast so much of you. God does not deal. Yeah, some five verse five. The Lord does not. The foolish will not stand before God. If God is relating, you know, when He said in Isaiah chapter one, "Come, let's reason together." You know, uh, He was He was not talking to fools. He was not talking to fools. Everybody gets up now. You know, I have a girlfriend. They dump it, the person in two weeks. They have something, uh, somebody else. They are in a relationship with a person A. They are also in a relationship with person B, C, D, E, F at the same time. I am not, I'm not surprised. I am not surprised that this kind of rubbish can happen. Somebody, I mean, what is, the, what is the wrong of God to have honored you and blessed you and given you a property and a house in East Legon and you have a group of companies and you are doing so well and so amazingly and all stuff like that. When somebody tells me that it's the devil, nonsense. How come the devil don't bring that same game to my doorsteps? Hmm? Control your temper. Control your heart. 
The Bible said he that cannot control his own emotions are like a city without walls. So can you imagine the city without walls walking around in our churches, in our nation, in our city, in our, work, in our workplaces? Huh? It is so sad. Share the page if you have joined us. There are seven things that I'm going to share with you. Be vigilant in this end time and work with those things. Because most of the things that we call God is not God. Apparently, most of the things we call God is foolishness. Most of the things that we call love is absurdity. And now we need to open our eyes very wide and know what a relationship with is a relationship is and know what you know God is in and what God is not in. I'm serious. Madness. Can somebody just wake up and beat your wife and beat your wife and beat in just one day? We have recorded three domestic deaths in one day. And you know what? These are the only ones that are reported. What about the ones that are not reported? What are the, about the ones that are not talked about? What about the ones that nobody knows? What about the ones that they are suffering in silence? What about the ones that they are free to speak up? What about the ones that they are free to step up or stand up to these abusers and, and uh, you know, uh, abusers of relationships and marriages? What about them? What about them? This is very, very interesting. And people die, and oh, 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 one week, we forget about it, we move on with our lives, and we continue to walk in this madness in the name of relationship. Let me tell you, when you are in a relationship with somebody, the person is abusive. The person does not know the worth of a woman, does not know the worth of a man, does not know the worth of a relationship and marriage. It, let me say this categorically clear. When you walk away, when you walk away, you are not a failure. Listen to what I said. When you walk away, you have not failed. You are protecting your precious life, which you cherish so dearly. When they kill you and they finish serving their prison or jail term, they will come back and still sleep with other women. Listen to what I said. Listen to what I said. Therefore, treasure your life. You are in a marriage. This guy is beating you and all stuff like that. And counselors are telling you, stay there. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. <laughs> Very interesting. And let me tell you the essence and the value of counseling. I'm not talking about rubbish. I'm talking about godly, matured, godly counsel. Matured, godly counsel. Not nonsense. Matthew godly counsel predicated on the premise of God's word, the scriptures. Yeah, not, not this erratic, you know, random, drastic human ideologies put together that sounds nice to people. No, that's not what I'm talking about. The people who died this morning are out of abusive relationships and marriages. Today, I'm telling everybody that is watching and that will watch later, did not deserve to die. They did not deserve to die. This is what I keep telling. The quality of marriage determines the quality of your life. The quality of relationships determines the quality of your life. The, the, the quality of the man you relate to, you are married to, determines the quality of your In other words, you can be married to somebody relating to somebody who does not have quality. If you, the lady or the man, if you, the lady, have quality, this man who doesn't have quality will run you down. I'm telling you. This is why I tell people, don't look at the cars, what he does. He is in tie, but he doesn't know the value of a human being. He can kill you without thinking about it. Then I prefer a farmer who has never been in suit, uh, who has the worth of the fear of God and has the fear, uh, uh, the, the, the worth of another human being's life at heart, at heart. Heartless generation, hear the word of the Lord. Godless generation, hear the word of the Lord. Erratic, rubbish, nonsense in the name of uh, 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 counsel. It's keeping these people in bondage relationships. 
Sometimes we should be able to look in the eyes of these young ladies that bring people to church and all say, and tell them that this guy does not deserve you. This guy does not deserve you. Straight, we should tell them. And dissolve it there and then. And avoid these kind of murderers coming in to, to have your hand. Listen, it doesn't start with killing. It starts with when they forget your birthdays. It starts with when they forget to show up at your graduation, at your ordination, at your matriculation. It starts with little, little, little things. You know, they have forgot to, oh, I forgot to buy your birthday gift. That's how it starts. When things that are dear to you are not, you know, uh, you know, you are going somewhere together and they can drive off the car and leave you. That is a sign. It starts off like that. They can be angry. They bust out and in front of everybody, they are insult you, abuse you and all stuff like that. It starts like that. It starts with, you know, you are in a restaurant and they are angry and they get up and walk away without even the bill and without you as a person recognizing you and honoring. That is how it starts. Be, they will not come with a knife straight. They will not come with a rope. They will never pull a gun from the beginning. It will start gradually, systematically, little by little. That is how it will start. That's how it starts. And by the time you know they tear off your dresses, they slap you, they'll kick you down and all stuff like that. And then they will, they will build up this kind of resilience, you know, and come and beg you. They will cry and cry and beg and apologize and cry. And then they will repeat the same thing. The same thing, even worse, will be repeated. That's how it works. It doesn't stop. If you do not run for your life, you will lose that life. And they will be living. And they will be sleeping with other women after you are gone. Hear it! Hear it. Love yourself. The Jesus said, yeah, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You cannot love your neighbor more than yourself. Love your life. Love yourself. Are you hearing me, young ladies and young men? Are you hearing me? It's time to value the life of that person. It's time to value that God values life. I'm reminding you, he that draws the sword by the sword, he will die. I'm talking to you now. You better hear the mind of God. And this is the kind of thing that we have on our hands and, uh, you know, all kinds of crazy things, you know, goes on and on and all stuff like that. Because a, a person is in church, is relating to five people at the same time in an intimate relationship at the same time in the same church. So when seeds of discord in the hearts of the daughters of Zion and creating chaos, anarchy and confusion at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to counsel you with godly counsel. If you walk away from an abusive relationship, you are not a failure. You have not failed. You have not disappointed yourself. You have not disappointed God and it is not a sin. Dear, any man that raises his hand at a woman does not deserve a woman. Any woman that raises his hand against a man is it it's not worth of a, of, a, of a peaceful and a meaningful relationship. I just told you something. Let this madness stop. That is madness. Let it stop. What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this beautiful, beautiful life? Gone. Just like that. It is sad. Precious lives. Gone. Gone. Precious lives. Ubi a wone banu a shen ne bafri ne mofrasi a at ne ko university. Now we are going to be wearing the same will be a brandy a ton to map fancy and all that, and we gather and do an engagement and do a wedding. You waste everybody's time. We do all these things together. Then you turn back and kill them, and we are sitting here heartbroken. This is what it is. Rubbish. 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 
It is sad. It is sad. People's daughters are lying in the mortuary right now because men who don't know the worth of a woman can just lift your hand, slap you, kick you, and kill you. And because our laws are loose, you kill somebody, you can't be killed. You put you in a prison, you eat morning, afternoon, and evening. Yeah, that is what you will do. But if you kill somebody and you are also killed, then you will be learning some sense. I want to talk to you. Stop giving your heart to, to pigs and to dogs. No insult. Matthew 7, 6. Read your Bible. Stop giving that which is precious like your heart to pigs and to dogs. They don't deserve your heart. Okay? They don't deserve your heart. And anybody who watched later, tag everybody you know who are in abusive relationships and let them know that these daughters of Zion don't deserve the brutal treatment that we give to them, the absurd nonsense that we take them through. Now their mothers are going to bleed for the rest of their lives. Is that what they deserve? They gave you their baby girl precious and sweet and all that you can do is to send a message to their parents that you have killed their baby girl that is what it is that is what it is that is what it is nonsense rubbish that is what it is i mean seriously that is what it is interesting this is sad. I, it, it breaks my heart. The lady who died at East Ligon breaks my heart. This one who died also at, in the Volta region breaks my heart. There is also another one in Accra. Only today, three of our sisters, our daughters, and uh, you know, these lovely people, gone. Gone. And you know what they do? All this abusive thing, it starts when they, they will cry, they will beg you and all that, that, that. Right now, they are crying and begging. I didn't know what I've been the devil. Rubbish. Rubbish. The devil. Have you seen the devil before? Is he blue or green? Tell me! Not to, needless to say that there is a devil. By the time you cannot control your own heart, you can't deal with in one woman. You know, sometimes it is not them that I blame. If the pulpit was preaching the correct message, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the real gospel, the good news of Christ, we would not have all this rubbish and nonsense on our hands. May, may God give you wisdom mm, to, to discern beast, so you don't give your heart to a beast. May the Lord give you the discipline uh, not to give yourself to a man before marriage. All these kind of crazy people granting or interviewed talking, you know, nonsense and capricious madness. Yes! You will get people, I'm not going to a Christopher, talking nonsense and rubbish. All in the name of, you know, sex before marriage is normal. You will think, you will know that that person is precious. And this is the reason why we cannot have lasting relationships. Because preachers, some preachers are even struggling with their own relationships. And some prophets are struggling with their own relationships. We cannot even keep a marriage. We cannot even keep a marriage. Cannot have a stable marriage, a home. Don't you know that that is a requirement to be a man of God? That a man of God has his home in gravity with God's word, in composure with God's word. He, you know, his own home is in composure and in conformity with God's word. He's an example to the brethren and to the believers. Abba Salwani. He is an example. Listen to that. Do you have to catch it up? He is an example. Not people just going about murdering people's children in the name of relationships and marriage. I'm going to sit here and tell you, anybody in an abusive relationship and marriage, get out right now and get help. I'm telling you. What is the sense? What is the sense of bringing a marriage or relationship to the altar and you end up killing people? What is the sense? What sense is there in it? What sense is there in it?
I want to pray for marriages. I want to pray for relationships before I go. But I'm going to tell you, stop listening to rubbish, uh, uh, the wisdom of the world. And let us go back to the scriptures. Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back to the word of God and to the fear of God. Let's go back seeking God for a relationship and not being carried away with material gain. You people, most of you are becoming so greedy and so selfish and so, you know, worldly attracted. Worldly attracted. The world is stealing your heart. He drives a car. He lives in the, the, that place. He lives in that location. He has this. He is the CEO of that. And so we have rubbish people with skill training and people with, you know, intermediary jobs who can take care of you, adore you, and cherish you. You don't want those people. You don't want those people. You want the murderers. The murderers. The murderers. They can hit you with an iron. They can burn you with heat. They can throw you to the gas oven. Yeah, the med you want the murderers. You are rather, you know, I like him. He smells good, but he's a murderer. A murderer. Yeah, he smells good, but he's a murderer. My mother, Dr. Chrissy Tete, is on the line. Mami Nang Mahajobo, thank you for joining us. And we solicit your prayer for this generation. Seriously, ma'am. The things that are happening is just unbelievably and unacceptable. A godless generation and, uh, you know, a heartless generation. I pray with you. And Heavenly Father, I'm praying in the name of Jesus. If we desert you, we have deserted life. And if we desert you, we have deserted the path of life. And therefore, oh God, have mercy on us, creating us a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not in from your presence. Take not your spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Renew a right spirit within us. Help this generation come back to the, the ancient paths. Let us come back to Jeremiah 6.16, 6, where the old paths are, that we will find peace and rest. I pray in the name of Jesus, every demonic infusion and imposition, we stop the hand of the wicked. And we stop, you know, anger, 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 demonic anger, we stop it. I commend every relationship and marriage to you and to the word of your grace that is able to build you as up and to give us an inheritance in Christ Jesus. You don't know Christ. That is also a big factor. We have rejected the way and the path of life. Akono, Akono, last has gone ahead of us. Now it is not, you know, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. We are no more led by the Holy Spirit. Rather, we are led by our emotions and our passions and what we like and what we don't like. And that is what we have. I draw your heart back to the Christ. The right hand is on your chest. Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Make me born again and a new creation. Tonight, I receive eternal life into my spirit. Father, I pray for everybody who prayed that prayer. Write their names in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, before I go, thank you for joining us. Anybody who watched later, we honor you and uh, we cherish God for your life. My mother, Dr. Christy Dotete, one great phenomenal icon of the kingdom, has been with us on this edition. Mommy, thank you very much. We love you. Bunch, bunch, bunch. The Lord bless you. I'll catch you guys soon. Tomorrow morning is Jerusalem on Pai, about 6 30 at Alabasta International Ministry, Tesano and Ponsa Memorial Temple. On Sunday, we're having, you know, uh, my mother is saying something profound. They said, too many pretenders in the house of God. I, so I was saying exactly this, ma'am, to Dede Rita. I said to her, Dede, if you want actors, actors, pretenders, gimmicks, mimics, people who can mimic, Come to church. Come to church. Catch the bias and pass on Papa Nico. If the Lord love you, continue to bless you. When right.
righteousness becomes a lifestyle. Breakthroughs become automatic for my daily return myself and the entire family of Alabaster will love you. May the Lord bless you.